respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another show of Life from Karbala, where we discussed uh, in the previous uh, two episodes uh, the most discussed topics, the most emphasized topics within the Holy Quran uh, with Sayyid Hussain al Qazwini. Uh, so let's welcome Sayyid Hussain, assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. How are you, Sayyidna? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How are you finding the fasting? Uh, during the first two days of Ramadan, Alhamdulillah. especially in Karbala, I mean, one of the holiest sites yes, on, on earth. It's been very, very wonderful, very easy. Alhamdulillah. And we're the guests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in this month. Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah khair. So, Insha'Allah, uh, today in the third episode, we inshallah discuss humility in the Quran. Is that correct? That's. Um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the beneficent and the merciful. And the servants of Allah are those who walk upon the earth with humility. And when addressed by the arrogant and by the ignorant, they, they say peace. peace, the words of peace. So what is the meaning and the difference, if you will, between humility and arrogance? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin. We always say that humility is a good trait and arrogance is a bad trait. Mm -hmm. Being humble is a good quality and being proud is a bad quality. But mm -hmm. what, is, what is the meaning of humility and humbleness? Mm -hmm. The way I see it, when I picture the word, well, we don't want an exact uh, definition mm -hmm. of the word humility. But let's try to imagine what hum humility and humbleness is. Mm -hmm. When I think of the word hum humility, when I hear the word humility, I think of uh, a person that lives with the people, mm -hmm. not above the people. A person who sees himself an ordinary human being. Mm -hmm. He doesn't see himself uh, above others even though he might have qualities or she might have qualities that distinguish him or her from others mm -hmm. for example knowledge lineage a special position yet he himself does not view himself as different from other human beings mm -hmm. this is humility mm -hmm. and this perception of course this is a perception when a, when a person views himself equal to others, mm -hmm. when he has this view, when he has this perception, this perception and view will translate mm -hmm. into actions. Of course. He will not act above others. Mm -hmm. For example, his tone of voice. His tone of voice is not condescending. Mm -hmm. You should do this, you should do that. No, none of this. We, we should do this. Mm -hmm. We should do that. Uh, you see this, this person who feels humility and humble. This person walks humbly, meaning he doesn't walk, uh, as we say, with his head up, with mm -hmm. his nose above others, mm -hmm. not saying salam to others. One of the qualities of humble people and people that feel humility, they say salam to everyone. Mm -hmm whether it's those that are older than them or those that oh, are younger yeah. than them. If you like to test the humility of a person, see if he says salam to little children. That's, that's a sign of humility. Another sign is that, for example, if this person were to go into a, a gathering, mm -hmm. he wouldn't mind sitting at the end of the majlis, mm -hmm. as we would say, or where the children sit, or the last seat the smallest seat in the majlis. This is a humble person. He doesn't sit in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Somewhere that, you know, people might not even notice him. This person is humble. This person is showing humility. And the bigger this person is, mm -hmm. when he becomes humble, this is more of a humility for him. Mm -hmm. This is more of a, an effort because if, it's a, if a regular person acts regular and normal, that's not a big deal. But let's say, for example, the prime minister or a minister 
or a, a member of parliament or a top scholar mm -hmm. an ayatollah or a top speaker mm -hmm. sits with, with everyone else he doesn't have a, a special VIP room he sits with everyone he eats with everyone he walks with everyone without 200 guards behind him oh, yeah. Of course, not when his life is in danger. Yeah. When your life is in danger, that's another story. Yeah. But when your life is not in danger, you're with your own people, you come in between the two haramain. You don't need 200 guards. When yeah. you have 200 guards walking behind you and in front of you and all around, this is not a sign of humility. This is a sign of arrogance. Mm -hmm. This is humility. Humility is a person who sees himself not above the people. With the people. With a person with the people. Mm -hmm. An ordinary human being. An ordinary citizen. An ordinary servant of Allah SWT. On the contrary, a person who is arrogant, no. He sees himself above others. He sees everyone else as here and he's over here. Why? Maybe because of his education. Mm -hmm. Maybe because he has a PhD. His PhD makes him a special human being. That gives it, he thinks it gives him the right uh, to speak condescendingly to others. It gives him the right uh, to not live with the people, but to live on his own, yeah. to live in his own world. Always VIP. Whether it's during majalis or in streets, he takes the VIP role. He feels like he always has to be recognized. He always has to be recognized. And if someone does not recognize him, the world goes upside down. Yeah. If he has a PhD, people have to call him doctor. If you don't call him a doctor, that means you're stabbing him in the heart. If he's a mujtahid, he's reached the top level, you have to call him an ayatollah. If you don't call him an ayatollah, the world will go upside down. If he's a doctor, you have to call him doctor. Mm -hmm. You can't call him hajj. Or you can't call him Sayyid if he's a Sayyid. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some yeah. that would prefer to be called doctor and not Sayyid. How weird. This is arrogance. Mm -hmm. Arrogance is to, is, to, uh, is to live above. It's to feel the need for recognition. Mm -hmm. The need for titles. The need for special seats. If he's not given or she's not given a special seat in the majlis, in the gathering... In the invitation, if he's given a bad seat, he'll get up and leave. Mm -hmm. This is arrogance. This is humility and this is arrogance. Mm -hmm. Mam Ali alayhi salam uh, explicitly said uh, about uh, the topic you just mentioned. Uh, an arrogant person is the one who sees himself above the people. as like a person on a mountain who sees the people small. But when they look up, they seem smaller. Smaller. Ahsan. That's so significant because it teaches us. Uh, it's, it's basic. I mean, uh, there's no need for arrogance. I mean, we're all equal. Muhammad yeah, says uh, there are two types of people in this world: either to you, uh, a brother to you in religion or reflection in humanity. So we're all equal. Ahsan. But uh, what's the emphasis of the Quran on humility? We see uh, this is a recurring theme in the Quran. Mm -hmm. The Quran emphasizes on humility. We see several verses that talk about humility. Mm -hmm. One is the verse that you recited in the beginning of this presentation, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in Surah Al-Furqan. Mm -hmm. And the verse is talking about the qualities of the servants of the merciful, the mm -hmm. servants of Allah. These are the qualities of the servants of Allah. Mm -hmm. The first quality. The servants of Allah are those that when they walk, they walk calmly. Humbly. 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 Without raising raising their necks and heads. Mm -hmm. Without looking looking down at people. No. No. They walk with the people. They walk humbly. They sit humbly. They live humbly. When you talk to them, they talk humbly, mm -hmm. with humility. When they say sit down, they say it in a humble way. They don't speak to the people. They, they don't speak to the people from a, a higher position. Mm -hmm. Even though they could be at a higher position. But when they speak, they speak in the same position. One of 
the qualities of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Some of the righteous Sahaba. The Quran says, "Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, والذين معه أشداء أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم. رحماء بينهم. They're merciful with each other. They're humble to one another. They show humility to one another." And another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is a direct order and advice to Rasulullah. وَخْفِضْ جَنَاحَكَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Lower your wings, lower your wings to the believers. This is a, a metaphor. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a metaphoric expression of being humble. Uh, in the coming nights, inshallah, when we speak about inshallah. the kindness to parents in the Quran, mm -hmm. one of the verses is uh, regarding uh, parents. Mm -hmm. Lower your wings of humility to your parents. This is an expression. When you lower your wings, it's a it's an expression of of humility mm -hmm. and humbleness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Rasulullah, lower your wings for the believers. Mm -hmm. Have you seen birds, crows, falcons, uh, or um, uh, peacocks? Mm -hmm. Peacocks, when they want to show off, what do they do? They raise mm -hmm. their feathers mm -hmm. and their wings to show their colors. This is a sign of arrogance. But when it's not showing off, what does it do? It lowers. Yeah. Even birds, when they want to show off, they'll raise their, their wings mm -hmm. out of arrogance. No. But when they bring down their wings, it shows them more humble. <laughs> Allah tells Rasulullah to be humble and show humility to the believers. In Surah Luqman, mm -hmm. Luqman gives advice to his son. He tells him, وَلَا تُصَعْعَرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا وَلَا تُصَعْعَرْ خَدَّكَ فِي النَّاسِ means don't turn your face away from people. Mm -hmm. Those who are arrogant, they don't live with the people. They turn their face. Some, someone poor, someone who has a question, or, or a family, friend, they speak to them, they turn their face. They don't give their face. This is a sign of arrogance. وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا don't walk with pride. You know, walking, it says a lot about a person. Mm -hmm. That's why we see a lot of verses that stress on walking. And another verse, this is uh, in Surah Al-Isra. Mm -hmm. So significant. Walk humbly mm -hmm. because you will never reach the mountains. Some people they walk, they raise their their backs and their shoulders, they raise their necks as if they're basketball players. The Quran is saying, listen, you're not you're not gonna reach the mountains. It doesn't matter how tall you stand, you're still gonna be a small person. Mm -hmm. Compared to the mountains, a person is not about size. It's not about how big you make yourself. Mm -hmm. A person does not become big by being arrogant. A person becomes big with his actions. Mm -hmm. With his actions. And another verse in Surah Luqman: "Waqsud fi mashik." When you walk, walk moderately. Again, this is a sign of humility. Don't walk. You know, I'm sure you've seen people the way they walk. They do, yeah. They walk. It's, when you look at them, you think, who does this person think he is? An emperor, yeah. a king, a president? No one even knows this person. Thus, the Quran is basically trying to say that you're not going to make yourself big by doing this. You make yourself, you let 200 people walk behind you mm -hmm. as bodyguards. Or there's a terminology called hashia. It exists still today. There are some people when they walk, they want 20 people to walk with them. Not bodyguards. Friends, workers, employees. Make them walk, walk behind you. 
Why? Because when, when you have 20 people, 30 people walk behind you, this makes them feel important. Mm -hmm. This makes them look important. The Quran is trying to say that you don't need 20 people to walk behind you to be important. You can become important with your actions, mm -hmm. with your deeds, with your contributions. How much have you contributed to society? That will make you important. Even if you walk by yourself, even if you walk wearing rags, even if you don't own a car, you walk, that makes you important. But if you have no actions, no deeds, no contributions, but you make 20 people walk in front of you, behind you, bodyguards, that's, that doesn't change anything. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change anything about who you are. That's weird. Because um, Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, he says, <clears throat> when you're in a position of uh, ruling, it's not to rule, to rule over the people, but to serve the people. And that's weird to see because we just we just hear the sayings of Ahl al-Bayt and not actually and not live talking them. and not live them in our lives. You know, we are not talking about Western societies. We're talking about actually Islamic uh, Shiite societies that when they actually come to Ziyara, the most safest place on earth as I consider it is is Karbala between the two shrines. I mean, even if you die in this place, you die uh, a death of, of of honor, you know. But they still have, as, as you mentioned, two hundred bodyguards, and I see that. It's not like something exaggerated. This is arrogant. Yeah, we see, we've seen that. But Ahl al Bayt in the Quran, they always advise the believers to be humble. But what's the connection between humbleness and respect? Mm. See. Um, you might have noticed this in your life mm -hmm. with your experiences and I'm sure that my dear viewers have noticed this too the people that are most humble and show the most amount of humility are the most respected people mm -hmm. the most respected people when you see for example a doctor mm -hmm. a physician yet in the mosque in the center at time of iftar when it's time to serve food he doesn't sit and wait for people to bring him food. He gets up and serves. Even though he's a doctor, he's a physician. Doesn't he grow in people's eyes? Doesn't this bring him respect? Even though serving food, or maybe even collecting the trash after people eat, it's not seen as something respectful. But when someone becomes humble enough and shows humility and does it, he gains what? Respect. Mm -hmm. He grows in people's eyes. Or if you see a scholar, big scholar, yet he says salam to young children, not just the older, older people and the elders, even to children, doesn't he grow in people's eyes? Definitely. We've seen that These are deeds that people don't do because they want respect. There's, I know some people, they don't, when it, for example, at the time of iftar, at, at our centers, at our Husseiniyas, at our mosques, they want to say it respectfully mm -hmm. so that people respect them. They don't want to get up and serve because in their eyes that's, that's disrespectful for them. That While that respect. brings respect. It does, yeah. That brings respect. That brings love. When they see a doctor, a scholar, someone who has weight in the society, he comes and serves. That brings respect. This person grows in people's eyes. We have a hadith by the Ahlul Bayt that says Man alillah, rafa Allah. Mm -hmm. he who shows humility for the sake of Allah Allah raises him subhanAllah he lowers himself it's as if Allah says you lower yourself I will raise I'll you. Bring you higher. I will raise you but if you want to raise yourself I'll lower you. then I will lower you subhanAllah I will lower you leave it to me Leave it. The more you lower yourself, I will raise you. Mm -hmm. Let's look at our, at our friends, our family members, our neighbors, people that we know, you and I know, and others. The ones that we love the most and respect the most are the ones that have the quality of humility and humbleness. Yeah, our teachers. Nice. I'm pretty sure that we all have teachers that we won't forget from elementary school, middle school, high school, college, Hausa. My favorite teachers were the most humble teachers. The ones that, that made me feel, you know, 
I'm worth something. Mm -hmm. They would answer my questions. They wouldn't brush me off. They wouldn't ignore me. I still remember those teachers. I pray for them. When I go perform ziyara, I, I say ziyara on their behalf. Because they're the ones that made me feel special. Mm -hmm. they, were, they showed humility and humbleness. On the contrary, those that are arrogant, they are the most disrespected and disliked people in every society. Those that you know, don't say salam to anyone. They expect everyone else to say salam to them. Those who have no respect for others, but they expect respect from others. Those that expect people to put them in good seats, in good positions. No one respects them. No one even likes them. These people are dreaded in every society, in every community. Thus we see a, a relationship between humility and respect. The more you show humility, the more respect, respect. You, you will get. The more respect you'll, uh, you'll earn. There's a, definitely there's a relationship. Mm -hmm. When we think about this, uh, when you said saying salam and being humble, uh, when we think about the greatest person on earth, the first person that comes to my thought is Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. He says, "By Allah, no one has uh, beaten me to saying salams first. He always would, yes, even to children, even yes. old people. You know, uh, such role models that we have in Islam. Yes, yet we're, I mean, we still have well, that. Rasulullah would always say salam to young children. Yeah. And this is a this is a test. If you wish to see if a person is humble or arrogant." See mm -hmm. if he says salam to children or not. Saying salam to elders, that's mm -hmm. not a big deal. That's an obligation. But to say salam to young children, that shows a lot of humility and, hum and humbleness. So we can say that humbleness is one of the significant character characteristics of a believer, of a follower of Ahl Bayt, even any person. But uh, when we discuss religious scholars, I mean, there's a very, it even catches my eyes to see uh, when we go into a majlis or a, a gathering, you see the scholar who is actually the most knowledgeable per person in that gathering, he's serving the people and stuff. So if you can elaborate on, on that. In Hawza, we are taught from day one, mm -hmm. from day one, we are taught in, in classes of akhlaq that a scholar has to be humble. Mm -hmm. A scholar has to show humility. If you, if you see a see, uh, what do what are scholars? Scholars are knowledgeable people. Mm -hmm. Those who have read, those who have studied, those who have done research, those who have read so much to the point that they have lost their eyesight, or they're on the verge of losing their eyesight. Those who have read and wrote, and they have knowledge. Thus, it's it's very easy for them to to feel arrogant. It's very easy for them to feel arrogant. Yet That's why we have narrations that emphasize on scholars to, to, be, to be humble and to show humility. A lot of narrations that emphasize ilmun ma'ahu hal to be knowledgeable but at the same time to be patient, to be uh, humble, to show tolerance for others. Because what's the point of being knowledgeable but not showing humility to others? Yeah. People are, are going to be, dis, uh, they're not going to be attracted to you. No. They won't be attracted to you. What's the point of studying if you don't allow people to come and benefit from your knowledge? And not even uh, uh, putting your education into, into action. Into action. Scholars are expected to, to live with the people to show humility, mm -hmm. uh, to open their doors for everyone, for all categories of people, mm -hmm. not certain groups, not from this nationality or that national. Sometimes we hear stories, inshallah they're not true, that we visited such and such scholar, but they didn't allow us. But they allowed a different group from another country that speak in a specific language. I hope this is not true. Our scholars, their doors have to be open for everyone mm -hmm. of all races, all nationalities. Whether you're rich or you're poor, you shouldn't be allowed because you're rich. Mm -hmm. And if you're poor, you're not allowed to meet the scholar or enter his home or be able to ask a question. 
This is not right. This is not the teachings of Ahlul Bayt. Thus, a scholar, the more he knows, the more he has in, his knowledge increases, the more his humility must increase. And the more his arrogance should decrease. You know, in, in Hawza, they give us a beautiful example. Very beautiful example. They say a, uh, a scholar should be like a fruitful tree. Mm -hmm. Fruitful tree. You see, uh, trees that don't have fruits in the winter, they're tall. But in the spring or in the summer, when they carry fruits, they come down. They come down. That's, that's a great example. Because the fruits are heavy, so they bring down the, the what do you call it? The fruits. The, or the, the, the branches. The, the branches. branches. The Ahsant. The branches are forced to come down because of the heavy fruits. The more it has fruits, the more it will come down. Have you ever seen a very tall apple tree? Or a very tall orange tree? No, they're all down to earth. Down to earth. For people to easily get, get their fruits. Scholars should be the same way. The more their knowledge increases, the more they should be down to earth so that people benefit from them. Mm -hmm. What's the point of a scholar that shows no humility when people don't be benefit from his knowledge? He wants to stand tall and live above the people. And let me share this story with you. There's a very well-known scholar. There was a very well-known scholar by the name of Sayyid Abdul Hussein. Sharaf al-Din, mm -hmm. the author of Kitab al-Muraja'at, this very, very distinguished book, al-Muraja'at, which is uh, several correspondences between him and Sheikh al-Azhar. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the book, at the end of the, correspondent, the correspondences, he makes him Shi'i. Sheikh al-Azhar becomes a follower of Ahl-Bayt. And this book has been translated into English under the name of the right path mm -hmm. the right path my father went to visit a Sayyid Abdul Hussein Sharaf al-Din in Sur in Lebanon mm -hmm. and this was in the 50s early 50s mm -hmm. my father was in his early 20s he might have been maybe 22 23 years old he said I went to visit a Sayyid Abdul Hussein Sharaf al-Din this top scholar who he, he wasn't a marja, but he was not less than maraja. His position, his knowledge, his books. He was in the position of being a marja. My father says, I went to visit him in Sur in the early 50s. I opened, uh, they opened the door. I went to the Sayyid. He said he was lying in his bed because he was ill. Mm -hmm. So he said, I saw him get up from his bed. He said, I rushed to him. Mm -hmm. I rushed him to make sure that he doesn't get up. Mm -hmm. But he was trying to get out of bed. He said, I went. I tried to grab his hand to kiss his hand. He said he pulled his hand. He grabbed my hand and he kissed my hand. He said, I was only 22 years old. I was still a student in the Hawza. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I wasn't famous. No one knew me. I wasn't a, a famous speaker. No one had seen me on TV. I was a regular student. Yet the Sayyid grabbed my hand and he kissed it. He said, I was so embarrassed that I wanted, as we say in Iraqi, I wanted the ground to, to swallow me. Mm -hmm. I wanted the ground to bury me. This is humility. This is humility. I saw a picture of one of the maraja in, in Qom. Mm -hmm. One of the top maraja, one of the oldest maraja in Qom now. Mm -hmm. I saw a picture of him embracing the hand of a of an African student. Beautiful picture. Beautiful picture. This top scholar, he's in his 90s. He's a merger. Yet he grabs the hand of an African student and he embraces it. This is the school of thought of Ahl Bayt. This is what the Quran teaches. This is وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ and you will only find this in the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt. You will find this in the school of thought of Ahlul Bayt. This is very significant because uh, a story mentioned and narrated by Ahlul Bayt about Prophet Muhammad uh, where he was giving a sermon and uh, a farmer went to shake a wealthy man's hand 
the wealthy man looked at his hand and saw it uh, worn out because of holding you know and working uh, so he didn't shake his hand he felt like he he's gonna get some kind of disease I don't know what. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa sallam came down uh, from uh, his place and kissed the hand of the farmer. I mean, with such a uh, humility. Rasulullah would time and time again kiss the hands of workers, farmers, gardeners, and say, "Hadhi yadun yuhabbuha Allah." Mm -hmm. This is a hand that Allah loves because this is a hand that works to earn a respectful income. A respectful salary. Mm -hmm. This is the humility of Rasulullah. I mean, Ahlul Bayt and especially Rasulullah teach us the best lessons about humility. What are specific traits of the humility of Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them? We see the Quran describes Rasulullah. One of his qualities mentioned in the Quran that says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ mm -hmm. Out of mercy of Allah, you softened for them. You were soft with the believers. Rasulullah was soft. Soft meaning what? With his akhlaq. Mm -hmm. He wasn't harsh. Mm -hmm. He didn't use uh, harsh tones. He spoke gently, softly, humbly with the people. The Quran says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ mm -hmm. You have great manners, Ya Rasulullah. Rasulullah had great manners. He would sit with the people. I've read narrations that in the masjid of Rasulullah, when Rasulullah would give sermons, he would sit in circles. In circles. Why? Because in a circle, there's no VIP section. In a circle, everyone's the same. Otherwise, you've seen our majalis. Mm -hmm. Our majalis, usually there's the end point and there's the beginning where... The, the, the dignitaries and the mm -hmm. important people sit. This was not how Rasulullah's majalis were. Rasulullah would sit in circular fashion so that everyone's equal. A hadith say that he would give his companions equal amount of attention. If he looked at, at this companion 20 seconds, he would look at this companion also 20 seconds. This one, 20 seconds. So on and so He treated them equally. This is humility. And I am shocked when I see some that say this verse, Abasa wa tawalla and ja'ahul a'ma. He frowned and he looked away when the blind man came to him. Some scholars say that this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. While we in the school of Talib Ahl Bayt, we, we stand against this. How is this possible that Rasulullah frowned and looked away because of a blind man? How does this go together with وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ Azim, does the Quran contradict mm -hmm. itself? This, per, this was another person. If my dear viewers go and read about this person, they will find out if they do their research. This yeah. was someone else. This was not Rasulullah. They tried to bring change someone, facts. Yeah. They raise someone else at the cost of Rasulullah, at the cost of the, disrespecting Rasulullah. The greatest person on earth. The greatest human being on earth. When we read about Imam Ali, mm -hmm. say, one of his prominent qualities is was humility he says regarding Amir Mu'mineen kana wallah fina ka ahadina by God he was one of us he was amongst us like one of us meaning he didn't act up we didn't feel that he was above us he lived with us Amir Mu'mineen alayhi salam had a companion by the name of Maytham, Maytham al Tamar, mm -hmm. well known companion. Mm -hmm. Maytham, al Maytham was a date seller. <clears throat> date seller. He was illiterate. He didn't know how to read and write. He didn't have any special skills. He was a slave. Amir al bought him. Yet, Amir al loved Maytham so much to the point that Maytham would sit outside of the mosque, Masjid al Kufa, and he would sell dates. Sometimes he, he would have to go home. He would have to, for example, use the restroom. He would ask Imam Ali to fill in his spot. Imam Ali would come. Imam Ali was the Khalifa of the time, recognized by all Muslims. Imam Ali would sit on the corner. He would sit on the sidewalk and sell dates 
on behalf of Maytham until Maytham goes and does what he has to do and then come back. Mm-hmm. Have you seen humility greater than this? This is, this is the teachings of the Quran. This is the living Quran. That is why we say Imam Ali huwa al-Quran al-Natiq. The living Quran, the verbal Quran. That's, that's significant because Ahl al-Bayt, especially Ahl al-Bayt, uh, when they sit in a, in a majlis or in a gathering, um, that's a very well-known story about Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, where uh, he was sitting at the end of the majlis near the door and someone tripped when he was walking by him, not knowing that this was the Imam. And later on, when knowing, he was surprised by the humbleness of the Imam. I mean, Ahlul Bayt are, they, they teach us the most significant and akhlaq. the most akhlaq and, and, and manners and humbleness. Um, Sayyidina, we're coming to the end of the episode. So if you have anything to add on. Or I'll finish with this. Mm-hmm. One of the qualities of Imam Zayn al Abidin alayhi salam, mm-hmm. and I'll say this because this is the month of Ramadan and at the time of Iftar, some of us, uh, maybe we have workers at home, bodyguards, uh, servants, mm-hmm. maids. Imam Zayn al Abidin at the time of Iftar, he would sit, he would gather all of his servants and sit and eat with them. He had maids, he had servants. He would gather them and eat with them. He wouldn't send them food and eat by himself. He would sit with the people. These were our Imams. This is the humility and humbleness that they show. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Inshallah we learn from this lesson. Inshallah. I mean, because uh, we're in the month of Ramadan, the month of forgiveness. To some, this may seem small because they would say, oh, if, if I say astaghfirullah, forgive me, O oh Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive me. But especially in this month, if a person does one good deed, it's multiplied by hundreds. So inshallah we learn from the lessons of Ahlul Bayt to inshallah. be humble inshallah. and to and to have good manners. So respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, um, if you didn't get the chance to view um, this episode or the full episode or the view, previous episodes, you can go on to our YouTube channel at Mahasain TV3. Or if you want to discuss and join the discussion with Sayyid uh, Hussein Qazwini, you can also go on to our uh, social networking. Websites, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, uh, Instagram, WhatsApp, there's a lot now. Uh, you can check them out as well and just join us with the discussion. Uh, so stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.